Yo, what's going on everybody, this is Rockin' here and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be going over something that was extremely requested by you guys and that's my render settings, what I use for my montages, my edits, my tutorials, literally I use the same settings for pretty much everything. I know there's a lot of you have been wondering what settings I use, as I know some of you have had issues with your renders coming out as, I don't know, 60 or 70 gigabytes big for only a couple minute render, which is, you know, clearly not what you want. Just before we get into it, I just want to clear up, I'm going to be showing you what I use for After Effects and Premiere Pro, not anything like Sony Vegas. DaVinci Resolve, anything like that. However, the settings that I use will translate over to them software. It's just whereabouts you'll find those options and things like that that will be slightly different. But the actual settings themselves will be the same across all softwares. So the first thing I recommend you do is download Adobe Media Encoder. If you don't have it, get it. It's part of the Creative Cloud Suite, so you can get it with your subscription. It's perfectly fine. There's no reason not to get it, really. There's so many benefits to it, such as being able to queue multiple renders at the same time. So for example, if I'm gonna leave my PC on overnight to render out a bunch of videos, I can have them all queued. Just hit this little play button in the corner and it will go through every single one that I've queued and render them out one, one after another. So I don't have to get up every half an hour to an hour, whatever, to queue the next one. It'll just work its way through them. I'll get up in the morning and bang, they're all done. Not only that, but for me, when I render out with After Effects, I don't have the options to export as an MP4 using H.264 encoder, which Media Encoder gives me that option, whereas After Effects on its own doesn't. Premiere Pro does. So if you're not planning on rendering multiple things and you just want to use Premiere Pro, then that's fine. If you're using After Effects, however, I recommend you get Media Encoder as it does give you more options. So in order to export to Media Encoder from After Effects, you just make sure you have the composition that you're using selected over here. All mine is is just simple composition at 1080p, 60fps, and I've just drag and dropped a clip into it. So in order to export it, you just want to make sure you've got the composition selected, come up to composition, and then you'll see add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. If you want to just render it out through After Effects, you can use the normal render queue, but like I said, it doesn't give me the options that I want, so I use the Media Encoder queue. Uh, you don't have to have Media Encoder open when you click this, it should open it, but mine's already open, so I'm just going to hit Add to Media Encoder queue. And if we go back over to Media Encoder, if you give it a second, you should see it appear over here where my cursor is. And there you go, you can see it's just popped in, and it's already automatically chosen H.264 high bitrate, and you can choose where it's exporting to. And for Premiere Pro, it's pretty similar, except you make sure you're on this video sequence you want to export, then you come up to File, Export, Media, and it's going to bring up this window, which is the exact same one that you're going to see in Media Encoder, but obviously we can change the settings over there. So I'm not going to touch any of these. I'm just going to hit Q and then you'll see it will pop up in Media Encoder as well. There you go. So this top one's my After Effects one. This bottom one's my Premiere Pro one. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing my settings that I use for 1080p videos and also for 1440p videos. So to start off with, with 1080p, which is what my After Effects one is at, I'm just going to click where it says H.264. It's going to establish a connection using Adobe Dynamic Link to my After Effects project. And you can see it's now opened up. So right at the top, you'll see the format. Make sure that you're on H.264. This will render out as an MP4, which is what you want for YouTube. If you're rendering out to put anywhere else, then of course use whatever format you like. But for social media things, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, use H.264. And the preset literally doesn't matter. You can use whatever because when we come down and change it, it will automatically swap to custom. Make sure that you've got export video and export audio checked. Obviously, if you don't want to export audio, don't check that. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to export the video. That's kind of the whole point of it. So just make sure you have them checked. And where it says output name, you can click this and you can choose where you want to save it and the name of it. I'm just going to leave mine where the default is. Then if you scroll down to the effects tab, I just leave all of this off. All the effects that I wanted to add, I would have added in my composition. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Come over to video. You can see width and height 1920 by 1080, which is what I had it set at in After Effects. So I'm just going to leave that. Uh, the frame rate is 60 FPS, which is again, the frame rate of the composition that I use. So I don't want to change any of that. Leave it on progressive, you don't want it to be interlaced. And aspect of square pixels, you want to leave that as well as NTSC. Then scroll down, you can see render at maximum depth. If you hover over this, it says rendering at maximum bit depth improves the video's quality but increases how long encoding takes. So I can vouch for that. The encoding does take a lot longer when you turn this on. I always have it on mainly just because I can. I'm not even sure YouTube supports that bit depth anyway, so it's just gonna get it's just gonna get put back to standard when they process it anyway, but I turn it on just you know, I bet. I mean, I barely notice the difference in the quality, but I just leave it on just because I want the maximum maximum quality for my videos. If you if you don't have such a great PC or you don't want to wait too long for your renders, then there's no need to tick that. I just do it. Whether you do that or not is completely up to you. Then scroll down a bit more, and you'll see profile main. 
uncheck this and then drop it to high. You want it on high, that's what YouTube wants it on and it also gives you many other benefits like being able to give your video a higher bitrate which will improve the overall quality. And if we scroll down even more you'll see the bitrate settings. So in here you have CBR, VBR1 pass and VBR2 pass. CBR is constant bitrate as you can see there's only one option here meaning that whatever I set this number to every single frame in my video will receive this bitrate. Whereas if I drop it to VBR, I can select a target and also a maximum, meaning that if I have certain frames in my videos which require a higher bitrate, for example, for example, if there's some fast paced movement or bright effects and things like that, then it will use the maximum instead of the target. However, it will predominantly stick with the target, which means that I can have a low file size as it will use the target bitrate the majority of the time, but then also preserve that detail as when, as and when it needs it, it will bump it up to use the maximum instead. VBR one pass means it's gonna render it out just once. And while it's rendering, it's gonna analyze each frame, figure out the bitrate it needs and render it all in one go. Whereas VBR is gonna basically render the whole video out, figuring out what bitrate needs to be allocated to which frames. And it's gonna render it out again and then actually encode it finally, um, which just results, it results in higher video quality, the amount of extra time it takes sometimes my renders are going for two three four hours i can't wait eight or nine hours to have it render out twice so i leave it on vbr and to be honest i haven't noticed too much of a difference for what i'm doing now the bitrate this is what's going to change the most between your different resolutions so at 1080p and 1440p this is going to be the main setting i don't really change anything else for the other resolutions but this is going to be predominantly what's going to give you that quality so this is going to be what's going to control the quality of your video so for 1080p which if we scroll up you can see this is at 1080p i use a target bitrate of 30 megabits per second and a maximum bitrate of 40 megabits per second. Now notice that this is in megabits per second. If you're using another program, it may be in kilobits per second, in which case 30 megabits per second is gonna be 30,000 kilobits per second. And 40,000 megabits per second is gonna be 40,000 kilobits per second. So just, you know, interpret that to whatever software you're using. So for me, I can just leave that at 30 and 40, that's fine. And then if we scroll down to the end, I don't bother with keyframe distancing and I leave the, vid the video is clearly not VR, so I'm not gonna take that. And at the bottom here, you'll see use maximum render quality i tick that it's just going to improve the quality of the video it does take longer to encode but this one's really worth it this one's definitely worth it uh, much more so than the uh than the maximum depth. So definitely make sure you have this ticked regardless of how good your PC is. Set start time code, you can tick that, you can you can tick that if you want. Uh, otherwise you can come down here and where it says source range, you can choose either the entire composition, the work area or custom. Choose how long the video is gonna be. By default, it will normally just use the work area. So for me, that's the whole composition anyway as I didn't adjust it. So that's all fine. Render using alpha channel only, no need to bother with that. No need to bother with that for MP4s. So don't bother touching that. And then time interpolation I set this to frame blending this basically means that if I'm outputting a video at 60 FPS and I recorded it at 120 it's gonna take the two frames that I had recorded at 120 and blend them together to make one frame for 60 FPS, if that makes sense. And it will also help when you're slowing things down, like when you're using time remapping, for example. So if your frame rate dips slightly below 60, it's gonna look at the frame before the gap, frame after the gap, and it's gonna figure out what to put in the middle by blending those two frames. I just leave it as frame blending, even though in After Effects, for clips that are dropping below 60, I'll normally turn pixel motion frame blending on. So that's completely separate and it will use the pixel motion instead of this. This is just here in case you didn't specify beforehand what you want to use. So just in case I forgot or if there's any clips in there that are above 60 FPS, I just leave this on frame blending. I just leave this on frame blending, that's fine. It just makes it smoother. And then come up to audio, AAC, AAC, 48,000 Hertz, stereo, high, and I output at 320 kilobits per second just max it out there's no reason not to it uh, doesn't really affect render times at all not sure youtube supports that high but when it processes it it will put it to whatever you may as well give them as much quality as you can uh, for them to work with as far as audio is concerned and then have the precedence on bitrate multiplexer leave it as mp4 don't touch any of the others this should just be default leave that as it is captions don't bother with any of that and then you just come down hit ok and you'll see it'll update here and now it says custom you, again if you want to change where it goes you can click that and choose where that goes but that should now all be perfect we set like if we go back into it you see it's remembered all of the settings that we specified and then if i go up here to hit this play button it's going to render this out in the order it's going to do this one first and then this one obviously you know we want to change the settings for this one before we render it out so i'll do that in a second but yeah if we hover over it you can see all our settings are set and then all you got to do is hit play and it'll render it out to where you specified now for 1440p videos if we go into the premiere pro one 
which the settings are going to be exactly the same as the After Effects ones. There's literally no difference, which is why I like using Media Encoder because it just makes it so much simpler. And you can create presets, like for example, I'll show you now. Once we've once we've set this one up, I'll add a preset for it, um, so we can add it in the future, which just makes it easier. Regardless of whether it's coming from Premiere Pro or After Effects, you can use the same preset for both uh, instead of having to manually type them in on each software. So that's another plus for Media Encoder. Uh, but yeah, just like before, export video, export audio. I'm going to come down, leave it 2560 by 1440. 60 progressive square pixels ntsc tick random maximum depth like i said before don't have to do that i'm going to just because i can profile high scroll down vbr1 pass just like we did before but now because it's a 1440p video i'm going to bump the target bit rate up to 45 and the maximum bit rate up to 70. now this just like the 1080p one this is just what i use there isn't really any formula that i follow like the proportions of this to the 1080p video there's probably no correlation whatsoever. This is just what I've used and what's worked for me. I record all of my clips at 70,000 kilobits per second. So that's 70 megabits per second. So this is the maximum quality that I can extract from my clips. And I record at 1440p as well. So for any frames where it's using this maximum bit rate, it will be getting the most quality possible. However, by adding the 45, it's also going to mean that my file size is not massive and where the quality is not needed. It's just better that way to keep your file size down, but also keep your quality up. So there's no need to put this any higher than the bit rate that you recorded your video at so for me that's 70 so i'm going to leave it at that if you recorded yours at 100 put it at 100 if you feel like it to be honest on youtube they're going to crush it down anyway i believe for 1440p they knock it down to something like 35 megabits per second so it's really not going to make too big of a difference. These are just the settings that I use to try and give YouTube as much data to work with as possible so that my video has higher quality while also not having a massive file size so it uploads quickly, processes quickly and doesn't take up a massive space on my hard drive and still preserves all of that quality. Then further down, keyframe distance off, the video is not VR so I'm not going to tick that. Do you tick use maximum render quality, time interpolation just like on 1080 I'm going to set that to frame blending and not bother ticking any of these and then come up to audio just the same as the 1080 AAC, AAC, 48,000 thousand hertz stereo high 320 bit rate that's all good leave multiplexer as it is make sure it's on mp4 though and captions don't bother with them and i'm gonna hit okay and now to save this as a preset you can come over here to this icon where it says save preset you're just gonna tick it it's, you can give it a name so for me i'm gonna call this i'm just gonna call this tutorial and you can see save effect settings and save publish settings. I don't bother with effect settings because I do all of my effects in After Effects or Premiere Pro. I don't add any after the fact, so I don't tick that, but I do tick save publish settings and hit OK. And now you can see the preset tutorial has been added. So now in future, all I have to do, say I added another clip. So for example, if I was to queue this one again, I'll just have to make a slight change so that it will let me render it. So just by dragging it up, you know, it's going to make it slightly longer. Um, and then I can go to export media and in Premiere Pro itself if you're not using if you're not going to use media encoder because you're just sticking to Premiere Pro you can come up here and select the preset in here or what I'm going to do if I put that back to there if I hit Q then you'll see it'll pop up in here in a second you go straight in bang tutorial or whatever you've called yours and you'll see that all the settings will be set exactly how you want them so I'd recommend you make, I don't know, a tutorial, 1080p tutorial, 1440 or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, preset 1080, just call it whatever you want, something memorable. So you can find it in here. You see I have some cinematics and packs and batches and whatever. And it just makes it much faster just ticking that and it, and it remembers all the settings so that it's all set how we said it a minute ago. So then you just hit OK and then you come up to the play button. It will render these out in order to where they're supposed to go. And without even clicking on it and changing it, you can just hit this arrow, come down and select it like this. And you can see if I hover over it. it saved all of our settings that we had before and that's perfectly fine. And that's pretty much it for my render settings. If you want to have videos to actually render out, then I recommend you follow some of my tutorials. I have loads of them on my channel. Make sure you go check them out. They're all revolving around Valorant montages and edits and things like that. You can use them for literally any game. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. I just show you how on Valorant, but the techniques will apply to Fortnite, CSGO, Rainbow, any game that you play. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'll uh, catch you in the next one.